Hello and welcome to this uh, web seminar on sensors for cryogenic application. I'm Daniele Naudi, CTO of Roctes Group, and today I will introduce you to this uh, topic. Uh, you should now hear my voice through your PC speaker or headset, and if you have any questions, you can ask them using the question panel, which appears on the right-hand side of your screen and I will answer the questions at the end of the presentation or later by email. And later this week uh, you will receive a link to our webpage where you will be able to download the presentation in PowerPoint format and the recording of the presentation itself. The content of this presentation is the following. First I will give you an introduction on cryogenic sensing, uh, what is cryogenic and why we need to sense uh, things in this field. I will then show you the different sensors that we have developed for those applications, in particular different type of displacement, strain and temperature sensor. And uh, I will then introduce some application examples where this technology is being used and will be used. And finally, as mentioned, I will answer your question using the question pen. Cryogenic is defined as the study of very low temperature, typically uh, below minus 150 degrees C, uh, how to produce those low temperatures and how materials behave at those temperatures. I have listed here some key uh, cryogenic temperatures. Uh, first one is liquefied natural gas. This is encountered in application where the gas is liquefied for transport with ships or pipelines that is 111 Kelvin or minus 162 degrees C. A little lower is the temperature of liquid nitrogen, uh, that's 77 Kelvin or minus 196 degrees Celsius. And finally, uh, the lowest uh, useful temperature for many applications is the liquid uh, helium temperature at 4.2 Kelvin corresponding to minus 269 Kelvin which is pretty close to what is called the absolute zero or zero Kelvin, which is the lowest uh, theoretical temperature uh, that can be reached by um, any uh, solid. Another very important uh, cryogenic temperature are, of course, winters in Canada, and that's the reason why we have developed some of those sensors. Okay, so jokes aside, the um, usefulness of cryogenic temperature strain and deformation sensing is in different areas of engineering and cryogenic is used uh, now in larger and larger structures than in the past and this is why uh, new sensors and new uh, measurement systems are required. In particular, we're talking about uh, LNG pipelines, so liquefied natural gas transportation and storage in tanks and application related to superconducting where um, special conductors are cooled to temperatures where they lose their electrical resistance completely which enables uh, different uh, type of application but most importantly to produce very strong currents in magnets and therefore generate very strong magnetic fields. This is used in physics uh, such as in the ITER fusion reactor prototype in particle physics such as the CERN um, collider and in biochemistry for example for spin resonance uh, magnets. Also there are laboratories that test components in space-like conditions where similar temperature are also encountered. Our experience at SmartTech and rock test in general in cryogenic uh, dates back to about a decade uh, we have been instrumenting several LNG tanks uh, with products uh, for the cryogenic and for the room temperature part. Uh, we've done testing for spin resin and magnets. We have instrumented the LHC magnets and CERN and we are currently working on uh, the ITER project and uh, on a European project called uh, CryoBrag in cooperation with fiber sensing and on a couple of other projects that I cannot disclose because of confidentiality agreements. Our main partners in uh, this uh, field are Fiber Sensing uh, that is working with us on ITER and Cryobrag to develop Fiber Brag rating sensor for cryogenic temperature, uh, SensorNet 
uh, for the Raman sensing uh, also at cryogenic temperature and FISO for the Fabry Perot sensors. In the different application that I have uh, explained previously, there are different needs in terms of sensing. In particular, we have identified uh, the following type of measurements that are required on different uh, um, projects. Uh, first of all, displacements, so movement between parts. This can be short range, like the opening of a gap between two elements that are close by, or long range, where you want to measure, for example, the contraction of a large uh, piece of metal or other material. And finally, non-contact displacement, where you want to measure the movement of one part with respect to the other, but without any physical uh, contact between the two parts. There are then strain measurements. Uh, those magnets, for example, are subject to very large strains, both thermal strains when they are cooled down, and then mechanical strain when the current is applied to the coil. Because of the Lorentzian forces, the coil uh, tends to expand and must be contained by the, uh, uh, the structural uh, elements. And finally, of course, the measurement of temperature, both local and distributed. And to address those needs, we have developed solutions based on the technologies that we are already using around the room temperature. And this includes the Fabry Perot sensor, our FISO technology, fiber Bragg rating or MUST technology, the SOFO sensor, laser distance meter, and Raman or DITEMP sensing. So I will now show you some of the sensors that have been developed and their performance and how those performance have been tested. First of all, we talk about small displacement sensor. Uh, you see pictures of a Fabry Perot uh, and a fiber Bragg rating uh, short uh, range uh, displacement sensor. Uh, they typically measure uh, movement between uh, a few millimeters, for example, plus minus three millimeters for the Bragg rating uh, or 10 millimeters for the Fabry Perot with a resolution in the micron uh, range. Uh, the accuracy is typically 0.1 degree and this includes all effects of temperature over the wall temperature range from room temperature to uh, uh, the cryogenic temperature. So the cross sensitivity to temperature is very low and therefore the um, calibration curves that are obtained at room temperature can be applied at cryogenic temperatures as well. Uh, similarly, uh, other sensors for larger displacement have been developed, for example, 40 or 80 millimeters uh, for the Fabry Perot or 80 millimeter with Bragg rating. Uh, these have a higher uh, or let's say lower resolution uh, and accuracy, but they can measure a larger displacement. So these are used, for example, to measure the contraction of large uh, structural elements. Those sensors can work in push or pull configuration, so they can either be uh, pushed against a reference plane or a wire can be attached on the back and the wire can be used to extend the uh, base of the measurement to longer distances. Here's an example of how those sensors have been uh, qualified. In this case, a long-range uh, Fabry Perot sensor is um, in a cryostat you know, so that we can bring it down to a, a liquid nitrogen temperature and then calibrated uh, th thickness blocks are inserted between uh, the sensor and the reference plane and we measure the uh, obtained the displacement uh, and compare it to the calibration curve that was obtained at room temperature. So here you can see the response is very linear and the residual error in this case is below 0.2 millimeter. And again, I uh, must uh, uh, underline that this includes uh, the temperature change. So there's uh, uh, no additional error due to the large temperature drop between the calibration and the measurement. Another type of sensor for displacement measurement is the non-contact laser distance meter. In this case, we use a standard uh, laser distance meter, such as the one depicted in the lower uh, right corner. And uh, uh, this is coupled to two optical fibers that bring the light to a measurement head that you can see here. So this is the measurement head where the uh, light is decoupled, uh, goes in the air or in the vacuum to a corner cube reflector, comes back into the receiving optics, and with another optical fiber, 
goes back to the measurement head. So this is as the advantage that all electronics uh, are contained in the laser distance meter that can be placed outside the cryogenic environment and inside the cryogenic environment we only have mechanical and optical devices such as the measurement uh, at the laser head and the reflector. Uh, with these sensors uh, we have been able to uh, measure with working distances uh, larger than 20 meters so the distance between the measurement head and the reflector can be more than 80 uh, than 20 meters with uh, an accuracy or sensitivity below 0.3 millimeters. Um, also we have tested uh, that the uh, target can be moved sideways by about 6 uh, centimeters and can rotate by 25 degrees without affecting the measurement. Here are some of the test results. So again we see in the cryostat the reflector here and the laser head on this side and we tested for distance of 2 meters, 18 meters and 22 meters and we got uh, a standard deviation well below the millimeter range. So that is a fairly accurate measurement over uh, long distances. In case uh, more accuracy is needed, we can use the SOFO technology. In this case, the working distance is limited to 5 meter, but we now have a sensitivity which is down in the micrometer range. So this can measure uh, much uh, with much higher sensitivity and accuracy than the laser distance meter. Uh, the measurement range is limited to a few centimeters as the uh, acceptable let lateral movement and rotation is a little smaller than in the case of the laser distance meter. Uh, I will show you in the application part uh, more in more detail how this technology uh, was used uh, at CERN. The next category of sensors uh, that uh, I would like to discuss are the strain sensors. Again, we have developed a sensor based on the Bragg rating and on the fabry perot technology. They can both measure uh, 10,000 microstrains in the tension or compression with 1 degree, 1% uh, accuracy and stability, again, over the wall temperature range and uh, uh, 0.1 or 0.25% resolution. Uh, those sensors have been tested uh, in liquid nitrogen, so the sensors were installed on a cantilever beam that was then uh, moved sideways in a controlled way and at the same time the sensors were in a cryostat where again uh, liquid nitrogen was used to cool down the sensors. In this configuration we could test over a limited strain range of plus and minus 1000 microstrain. Here are the results for fiber Bragg rating. Uh, you see here the measured strain at room temperature and then when the sensor is cooled down to cryogenic temperature we obtain the curve in blue here and at the same time we also observe a reference grating which is not subject to strain and can be used to compensate the temperature effect and when those two um, measurements are subtracted we obtain a temperature compensated strain reading which is almost identically superposed to the original sensor. So in this case with the Fabry Perot we can obtain a temperature compensated uh, uh, strain measurement. Uh, the Fabry Perot technology on the other end is self compensated for temperature effects on the sensor which means that we don't use a reference uh, sensor in this case and we observe in this case the contraction of the steel uh, from room temperature to uh, 103 Kelvin temperature. And again you can see the response is uh, the same at the two temperature when additional strain is applied. So both technology can be used and uh, each one has advantages and uh, uh, drawbacks depending on the application. One is more adapted to measure the absolute strain uh, produced also by thermal compression and Fabry Perot has the advantage that can also provide a, a temperature compensation of that without using an additional temperature sensor. Finally point temperature sensors. Um, we uh, have sensors that cover different temperature ranges typically between uh, 20 and 100 Kelvin is one range and between 70 and room temperature is another range 
and the accuracy of the measurement tends to be higher with higher temperatures and resolution as well. Up to now we have tested sensor down to 4 Kelvin for, fabri, uh, for, for fiber bra grading and down to 77 Kelvin for fabric Pro, but additional tests are planned for the next uh, few months, so we hope to improve even more the temperature range for those sensors. In terms of distributed temperature, we have also characterized the Raman distributed sensing in the temperature range between 80 Kelvin and uh, room temperature and we found that we can guarantee a resolution of 0.1 Kelvin and accuracy of uh, uh, 1 Kelvin uh, with proper calibration. So this technology is not adapted to reach helium temperature such as uh, uh, 4 Kelvin but down to 60 to 80 Kelvin is a very accurate uh, measurement so it can be used uh, uh, advantageously to measure, for example, the thumb temperature distribution during the cool down of very large uh, elements such as the uh, superconducting uh, magnets. Here's an example of distributed uh, temperature sensing at cryogenic temperature. You see here the beginning of the cable at room temperature entering a cryostat with the first uh, area which was cooled down to about minus 90 uh, degree C and the second area here that was cooled down to about 100 and minus 170 Kelvin and then the fiber comes out again of the cryostat back to room temperature. So in this case you can see uh, uh, with a single fiber we can cover the whole temperature range from room temperature to uh, uh, liquid nitrogen temperatures. Of course, to use uh, optical fiber sensors at those extreme temperatures, we need some special cables because the standard fiber optic cables do not survive uh, at those temperatures. We have uh, developed and tested uh, different sensor designs. Uh, one is based on polymer coating on the fiber and in this case is a non-metallic uh, uh, sensor or a cable that can be used in very strong magnet condition, for example and then other metallic designs including the tube in tube uh, design where two capillary tubes are, are made of stainless steel are uh, made or are put one into the other or braided construction where we have a capillary tube with a steel stainless steel braid on top of it. Uh, those cables were also tested uh, in uh, cryogenic condition in particular we tested temperature shock and temperature cycling. Here for example you can see about 10 cycles between room temperature and uh, liquid nitrogen temperature. You can see there's a small increase in losses in the optical cable where it's uh, when it's uh, uh, put into the cryogenic chamber but that uh, effect is small and reversible. So uh, when the temperature goes back to room temperature the losses are recovered fully. Okay, so this was an introduction about the different sensing uh, technologies and different sensors that have been uh, developed and now I would like to show you some application of those technology to uh, sensing in different uh, um, industries. The first example would be the CERN uh, a collider, then I will show you something about testing materials that can be used in spin resonance magnets then a little introduction about the ITER project and superconducting magnets and finally something about LNG tanks uh, monitoring. The LHC is the largest uh, particle collider in the world, is uh, installed in a tunnel below Geneva in Switzerland, half of it is in Switzerland and half of it is in France in fact. Uh, the uh, tunnel is very large as you can see from this picture and inside the tunnel there is a very large number of magnets uh, made with superconducting uh, uh, wires that are used to create a strong magnetic field that bends the uh, protons around that, uh, um, that collider. So here you can see another picture of uh, the LHC uh, magnets. Uh, the two pipes that you see here are those where the uh, magnets, uh, where the protons circulate everything else is cooling, uh, wiring for the magnets and shielding for the temperature isolation. 
The uh, task that we received for that project was to measure the relative displacement between the cold mass, which is the element you saw in the picture before, and the vacuum tube, which is basically a steel tu tube put outside it and used to create vacuum uh, inside. Uh, the measurement base was around 20 centimeters and uh, the one end of the measurement uh, base, so the cold mass, was at 1.5 Kelvin. Uh, so that the helium becomes superfluid and uh, the other end was at room temperature, 300 degrees C. So in this case it was not possible to put a physical sensor between those two points because it would create a thermal bridge and so to measure the contraction uh, during cool down and the later lateral movement uh, it was decided to use a non-contact uh, measurement uh, based on the optical fiber uh, sensors. The sensor we designed is based on the SOFO technology. Uh, the uh, um, optical signal comes in from this fiber, is split to a coupler, part of it goes to a reference fiber and the other part goes into an optical system with a lens, a mirror and then uh, a, a cold mass meter on the other side. So what we will measure is the change of distance between the mirror head and the cold mass mirror in the in, on this side. And here you can see a picture of the head itself uh, with the uh, steering mirror on, on this side. Then the sensor is attached to the SOFO readout unit where the length difference between the reference fiber and the sensing uh, beam in the sensor is compared to a well-controlled uh, length difference between a reference fiber and another movable mirror inside the sofa reading unit. Here's a picture of the sensor head and uh, a picture of the installation of the head into the uh, uh, superconducting magnet. So here in this picture you now see also the vacuum tube is the blue uh, tube outside and the uh, cold mass which is the inner part here. Uh, the sensor is placed flat against uh, the uh, vacuum tube here and the beam then goes through a hole in the uh, thermal isolation to the mirror which is installed on the cold mass. It's a little difficult to see it here because the, the space was so small that it's not easy to see uh, the different parts here. And here you can see uh, two sensors placed on the left side and on the right side of the um, of the uh, cryostat. There's another one uh, on the bottom but we will concentrate on the two sensor left and right. Here's the vacuum feed through to get the optical fiber out of the uh, uh, vacuum tube so that it can be connected to the instrument. This was an old design, now we have a newer one which is more compact and looks uh, nicer. And here you can see some uh, results of uh, measurements that typically uh, performed during cool down. So you see the temperature here starting at room temperature and then going down to uh, nitrogen temperature and then helium temperature. And what you can see here are the displacement measured on the left side and on the right side. And from those measurements we can, can calculate the center movement. So you see the, it moves uh, on one side and then when it cools down it comes back to the center. So it means that it bends uh, like a banana and then comes back to the uh, original shape. And on the other end if you measure the diameter change of the cold mass you can see that there is a contraction of about uh, one millimeter in the diameter of, of the cold mass which corresponds to the thermal contraction of uh, that uh, steel element. On the next slide, uh, we have a more uh, complicated uh, result uh, in a so-called fast cool-down condition. Uh, you can see here the temperature was raised from cryogenic temperature to room temperature and then dropped back very quickly to cryogenic temperature. Again, you can see pretty complex uh, behavior of the structure during the transients, but at, at the end, uh, the uh, positioning of the uh, cold mass comes back to the center of the cryostat. A second application was for material testing. Uh, 
in superconducting magnets. Here you can see a fiber Bragg rating sensor installed on different type of materials that are then inserted in this cryostat that also contains um, superconducting uh, magnets. The idea here was to test uh, uh, if the sensors were able to measure the contraction of the different materials and also to see how the sensor would behave in the very strong mag magnetic fields created by that superconducting uh, coil. First, you can see here the thermal contraction. We start here at uh, room temperature, going down to cryogenic temperature. This is the effect on the bare fiber alone and then on different materials, uh, such as uh, some uh, uh, composite, uh, steel, copper, uh, titanium niobat and uh, uh, tin niobat and aluminium. So every material shows a different contraction but basically you can see all of them approaching uh, the absolute zero also lose their thermal contraction almost uh, completely. It's interesting to see that the bare Bragg rating doesn't measure much below 100 degrees C so it means that actually for measuring strain at very low uh, temperature is not needed to do any temperature compensation on the Bragg rating because the sensor uh, is only sensitive to strain and not to temperature when it's free. Here you see the results of uh, application of strong magnetic fields. You can see that most of the sensor don't measure anything where uh, uh, magnetic fields up to 6 Tesla are applied but on some materials which are magnetic such as tin niobat or uh, anti-magnetic as tin niobat, you can see there is some uh, response. So this is not um, an error of the sensor but is rather the sensor measuring an actual uh, compression or extension of the material which is subjected to the magnetic field. Another very interesting project that we're working on is the ITER uh, fusion reactor is a prototype uh, uh, fusion reactor which uh, should become the first uh, fusion reactor to produce more energy than it uses and is currently being built in Kadarash in France. Uh, the, um, this uh, mag magnet uh, and the uh, plasma that will be made inside this toroidal shaped uh, chamber is huge. You can see here as a reference the size of a, a human uh, person. So you can imagine how large all these element is and the, the things that you see here uh, around the chamber are the magnets and these magnets will be cooled down to cryogenic temperature. So you can imagine the amount of, uh, of uh, material that needs to be cooled down and also the, uh, because of the size of those magnets that uh, there are huge uh, strains that are created by the cooling and by the application of the current. Therefore, ITER has decided to apply a large number of sensors. We are talking about more than 1,000 sensors to measure displacements, temperature and strain uh, in those magnets. And they have decided that 80% of those sensors will be fiber optics. And the consortium formed by Smartec and Fiber Sensing has won the award to qualify and apply the sensor to this very interesting project. So many of the test results that I show you in the first part of my presentation were actually derived from uh, this project. Finally, I'd like to conclude with uh, another application for the monitoring of LNG uh, tanks, uh, liquefied natural gas. Uh, here you see an example of such tanks. They are composed on a, of an outside uh, shell made of concrete and an inside tank made of steel, typically. and um, Rock test has supplied the different sensors for this application, including uh, a traditional uh, vibrating wire uh, sensor for strain in the concrete and temperature in the concrete, inclinometer reading for the uh, bottom slab, and fiber optic displacement sensor to measure the movement between the concrete wall and the inside uh, uh, steel tank at cryogenic temperature. Here you see an example of installation of a borehole extensometer to measure the vertical um, uh, compression of the soil under the tank. Here is installation of the sensor itself uh, uh, during drilling and the measurement head once it's installed. 
And then here you can see the installation of vibrating wire uh, sensor in the lower uh, part of the slab. So this is the part that will then support the, um, uh, the tank itself. And finally, uh, fiber optic sensors were used to measure the differential movement between the slab and the outer walls and between the inner wall and the outer wall during either test and in the long term. So in this case, uh, uh, FOD Fabri Pro sensor of uh, a similar design as the one that I have shown you uh, in the first part of the presentation were installed into these kind of protections so that they, so that they can measure the movement between here, which is the outside concrete wall, and on this side the inner wall of the LNG tank. Then you see the pipes that are used to bring the cables outside. A few pictures, a uh, little difficult to tell, but this here are, is the sensor itself between the concrete wall and the uh, tank wall, and then the pipes used to bring the cable out. And outside there's a connection box that then brings the optical fiber to the uh, uh, fabric pair or readout system. So this brings me to the conclusion of my presentation. Uh, I have introduced several sensors that can measure displacement, strain and temperature in cryogenic condition. Main applications are monitoring of superconducting magnets uh, and other type of uh, cryogenic application as well as liquefied natural gas tanks and pipelines. Uh, Smartec and Rocktest are positioned now as leader in the supply of fiber optic sensor for those uh, cryogenic applications, having uh, successfully delivered uh, a large uh, number of uh, projects. And uh, to conclude, um, before introducing the application, I'd like to show you another application of cryogenics. Here is instant ice cream made with a liquid nitrogen. So if you buy any of those sensors and come for a factory acceptance test, uh, we will let you taste this delicious uh, coffee ice cream. Uh, so if you have any question, you can use the box on the right hand side of the screen and if you want to listen and see the past web seminars, you can have a look at the page that is indicated here. It requires registration to the Rock Test uh, website, um, but you will be able to see this uh, web seminar and the previous one. And with that, I thank you for your attention and I will now answer your question using the question panel. Thank you very much.